Here we go. It's Friday, the 27th of September. Cheers. Well, I had a sense of foreboding for a couple of days. And sure enough, came to fruition. <clears throat> fruition. I knew something was up. Last time I got the news that Kelly, my friend, not real close, but my musical partner and friend Kelly, Callier from the band RAF, committed suicide yesterday. Kelly designed this. That's his design. Kelly. Kelly Callier. He was not the original singer in the band RAF. RAF was around, we've been around for 30 something years, 37, 38 years. When we first got going, I was the oldest member of the band. It was a high school band that I ended up joining because the lead, the original lead singer was a teen patient on one of the units at the psych hospital that I worked at. And um, he was really smart, troubled, but very intelligent and just a lightning rod for uh, music, especially punk rock. I started to run into him at the shows when bands were started. This was just at the beginning of the underground scene in the 80s of hardcore punk and bands um, traveling and touring, Black Flag and DOA. Who they, they basically started all that. And I... After seeing the Ramones um, at, the, at the end of the 70s, it was life-changing. So I was into it. So what I'm trying to explain is, from the get-go, RAF has been a tragic um, affair. I got involved through meeting, eventually, the guitar player, from RAF, who was not a patient in the hospital, but I met him at one of the shows through Matt, who was the ex-patient. Paul impressed me. I gave it a shot. I'm glad I did. Paul, and to this day, are friends. But anyway, Kelly was um, even younger than Paul and Matt, who were 10 year, years younger than me, 10 plus years younger than me. And he was like a big fan of RAF. Turns out that he went to almost all of our shows in Omaha. So when we broke up, we didn't really break up. We just stopped because Matt ended up in, in, in prison because of many things. He was, went to prison twice. One thing led to another and... The band was reformed, really partially at the urging of Kelly and Dan, who also joined years later. They were both huge fans of the band. And so he, he became our second singer and really stepped up to the plate because he um, loved our music and, and what we were about so much. I, interestingly, he, Kelly was one of the kids that I had a, had a hard time remembering from the scene because I hardly saw him, even though he was always around, which I find interesting. And it kind of fits with how he was there, but not there. I mean, he was really there for a lot of people, but not for himself. Kelly was found by his current girlfriend yesterday. This wasn't the first time that Kelly's tried to kill himself. This is actually the third 
third time that I know of. So third time is a charm. You know, I'm just going to just rip on this because I'm still kind of in shock. Even though I kind of knew this could happen, it's still shocking. It still sucks. I never have never been into a lot of the imagery that can be associated with punk. But these skulls and some of the lyrics of Kelly's songs tell his story and tell of a deeper problem going on with him all along. In social media, it's just, especially on Facebook, people are devastated. Kelly was well-liked. He was a perfect example of an adult male who compartmentalizes. Oh, everything's just fine. Everything's just fine. He always wanted to be there for other people, but he couldn't be there for himself. I tried to intervene, to be honest. And I also tried to intervene along with family members after the first suicide attempt, and he was hospitalized. And he pushed us away. And it got, even got to the point where Kelly told me to stay away from his family because the reality of what was going on was arising to the surface, and it wasn't a pretty picture. And it was unflattering to him. So, I, I had to step away. I, I love his children. They're both growing up now. Momo just went to college for the first year. But I liked his wife, too. And their relationship was, was horrible. But it got to the point where, you know, without revealing too much, it was like, Something's wrong with this picture. Something's wrong with Kelly. And um, sure enough, he was successful in at ending his misery. On For the sake of his family, they asked the band to include the suicide hotline number in our post about his death. But that suicide hotline was available to Kelly. It was not the answer. I am a suicide survivor. I have made se several su serious attempts on my life. I'm obviously not supposed to be gone yet. The damage is, in, is internal. None of us can see what the other person is going through. None of us can under fully understand. So when people say, reach out and call, you should have called somebody. That's not always the answer. And here's the thing I know from, from experience, personal as well as working in the mental health field. If a person is talking about it or talking, they're okay. When a person decides they're going to end their life, they don't tell you. So the idea of he could have called somebody, no, that wasn't the answer. The other part, because besides being a retired mental health professional, 30 plus years, I also worked voluntarily for a short time on the suicide hotline here in the Omaha back in the day. And unfortunately, most people in that situation don't know what to say and oftentimes say things that are not helpful and sometimes harmful. I learned the hard way. And I've dealt with several suicides besides my own attempts. Suicide is very painful. It also creates anger, you know, in the people who left behind because many of us don't understand 
I do in this case. I really understand what was going on with Kelly as much as possible from the outside. There's nothing I could do. We tried. I tried. The band tried. We tried. This shirt is designed by Kelly. Made by Kelly. The other one, Soundwaves. The sound, my Derek Higgins Soundwaves. He designed these for me. I didn't even ask for these. Just out of the blue. He um, called me one day and said, I have something for you. When he delivered the first batch of Soundwaves t-shirts, it's like, he did, he, that was his design and everything. That led me to making the Soundwaves CD release that I did with his design on it. So I'm very sad. I'm very, very sad. Still processing it, still in a bit of shock. I did have a sense that the band, you know, whether I wanted it or not, could be over. And it definitely is now. Kelly's gone. If you ever saw us, you saw you saw you saw history. Even before Kelly had passed, our shows are legendary, including the ones with Matt, the singer reform, because we're a firecracker. It's why we've won three times here in Nebraska. Best punk band. Three times. Uh, the award's only been going for I think four or five years, and we've won three three of those years. And we deserve it. Kelly was a big part of it. I loved performing, playing the music with Kelly on stage because he got he got it. He gets it. He got it. Total abandon. It's about the moment. I would love those moments when we would just be crashing into each other on the stage and mics coming unplugged, guitars are getting unplugged, drinks are flying off the stage. That was it. That was what I lived for. You can... The last time we played together is on is on video. It's in my playlist. My live performances play, playlist. The last time we played together was so... This is really spooky. It was a, a, two years ago, the day before yesterday, of all things, my brother's birthday, September 25th. The, the album release show. When we finally got this done and did the album release show, that's the last time we played together. There's a clip of it, and it's the song The End. I mean, Kelly's talking to us and telling us in so many words what he's going through, but and the other band members will admit it too. We were too busy playing the music. We're not paying attention to what Kelly's singing. We're blazing. We're just, it's the music. It was the act of the making the music that was the most important to all of us. But Kelly was telling about his pain cryptically in the lyrics. I had to share a, talk, a call with Aaron Gum from Glow in the Dark. He lost his partner to suicide. Was that this year or last year? See, I get, I lose track of time. But when he texted me, I said, well, yeah, I guess it's my turn now, huh? Some dark humor. It's devastating for everyone involved. It's so unnecessary. But no one can take our inner demons away. We all have something. We all have something that ails us. And no one else can take it away. Only we can heal, so solve it, resolve it, or just keep trying to run away from it. And that's what Kelly was doing. He was running away. He had opportunities to so, to work through, but he kept running away. I think 
that the issues go back to his childhood, something, some deep trauma, way before even he got into punk rock. That's, you know, again, that's part of why I was drawn to the punk rock community is because it's a bunch of misfits, outcasts, people who don't feel like they fit in. That's, that's me. I've always felt that way still. As much as I am loved and appreciated, I still have those feelings of being an outsider, being alone in some ways, even though I'm, I'm, I know I'm not. I've gotten some really nice texts and a, a few calls. People, thankfully, are respecting my space, but they're, they're reaching out. It sucks. So that's what I have to share today. I'm grieving. The band RAF is grieving. Uh, lots of people are in shock and grieving at Kelly Callier of RAF committing suicide yesterday. He was well loved and very talented and smart. But that's the thing. There's intelligence and and emotion are not the same and they don't go like this you can i can i can go on so if you have a if you happen to have a Derek higgins t-shirt or if you happen to have an raf album or cd that shit is priceless it was already but now the guy that helped to create that stuff is, is gone. Kelly is gone. It's the end of an era. It's going to be tough for a few days, but I'm going to be all right. I hope you're all right. Have a good weekend.